In this video we will explain what the continuum hypothesis is. First, we should define the size, or cardinality, of a set. The cardinality of a finite set is a natural number, the number of elements in the set. Two sets have the same cardinality if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements of the two sets. We don't care what the elements of the sets are, as long as there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between them, we know that their size is the same. However, their size isn't the same if we cannot find a one-to-one -one correspondence. We can also compare the sizes of infinite sets. Given two infinite sets, we just need to find a one-to-one -one correspondence to know that their size is the same. For example, it's easy to prove that the set of the integers has the same size than the set of the natural numbers, since we can easily find a one-to-one -one correspondence. First, we pair the even numbers with their halves. And then, we pair the odd numbers with the negative integers. We have just found a one-to-one -one correspondence, so we can say that the two sets have the same size, or cardinality. But what about the rational numbers? The rational numbers are dense, in the sense there are infinitely many rational numbers between any two natural numbers. Surprisingly, the two sets have the same cardinality. Let's display all the fractions on this plane. Each rational number, is represented by a point in the infinite two-dimensional grid shown. Note that not all points on the grid are valid representations of rationals. But it certainly contains all rationals under this representation. The idea is to map each fraction, to its position along the spiral, starting at the origin. This mapping certainly maps every rational number to a natural number, because every rational appears somewhere in the grid, and the spiral hits every point in the grid. The rational and natural numbers, have the same size. And the cardinality is Aleph null, the smallest of the infinite sets. But what about the set of the real numbers? Is its size bigger than the natural numbers? Or in other words, is it possible to find a one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of the natural numbers? We will see that, it is not possible to find such correspondence. In order to prove that it is impossible, let's suppose the opposite, and find a contradiction. Let's suppose we have a one-to-one -one correspondence between the natural and the real numbers. Put them in a list like shown, and take the diagonal digits. Then, add 1 to each digit. By construction, this new number is not in our list, since it will differ by at least one digit, to each number in the list. Therefore, no such one-to-one -one correspondence can exist. The size of the real numbers is bigger than the natural numbers. So far, we have found two different size of infinite sets, with the reals being larger. But we can ask ourselves, is this larger set, the next infinite set after the naturals? Or, can we find yet another infinite set with a size between the naturals and the reals? This question, the continuum hypothesis, was formulated by Georg Cantor in 1878. Kurt Gödel proved in 1937, that the continuum hypothesis is at least consistent with the standard set theory. This means that we cannot prove that the continuum hypothesis is false. Paul Cohen proved in 1963, that no contradiction would arise if the negation of the continuum hypothesis was added to set theory. So, the continuum hypothesis is independent of the standard set theory. We can add the hypothesis, or its negation, as an axiom, preserving the consistency of the theory.